Clutch Trucker filmed before a live studio audience. That's Rusty, the world famous meatball dog. Hey YouTube, Clutch Trucker here. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Clutch Trucker channel. Um, here I am in Omaha, Nebraska. I was supposed to deliver this afternoon at 3 o'clock, uh, but I, I overslept this morning. I slept in. Uh, hadn't gotten much sleep the last couple of nights, and uh, boy, I just could not get out of bed today. You know, sometimes you've just done too much, and your body lets you know and says, hey, uh, you need more rest. So, um, you know, called the broker and said, look, I'll, I'll still head there. And he said, well, go ahead and see if you can get in tonight. Of course, nobody was there, so we're going to have to do this tomorrow. But, you know, it's all about being safe, and that's the whole uh, moral of that story. I didn't feel safe enough to get back out there driving and drive another seven hours when I wasn't properly rested. And uh, that's what it comes down to, being safe. And if your company won't back you in a situation like that, you're working for the wrong company. This week had been a crazy week uh, with those huge storms that came through on Monday. I was in Milan, Illinois, supposed to deliver there and got over to the uh, receiver and uh, hung out for a little while. They were deciding what to do. Then the power goes out, the storm comes through. Luckily, they had a pole barn that I was able to pull the truck into. I was able to ride out the storm in there. Uh, that's when I did my previous video about cooking up the grilled cheese on the George Foreman, baby. It's a beautiful thing. Anyway, um, the company I leased to, Turquoise Trucking, they're in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. They got annihilated up there. Uh, the building had all this uh, siding ripped off of it. They lost power and internet and phones and everything else. They're still working out of a hotel in Toralville. Uh, so, been crazy. And so, yeah, with all that going on and, and still trying to do loads, yeah, I, I ended up sleeping in today so I'm gonna have to deliver this load tomorrow but like I said I've got a company turquoise trucking who backs me up on stuff like that uh, you know they say if you don't feel safe getting out there don't get out there that's the right kind of company to work for okay uh, I had a great comment on my hours of service video if you haven't watched that one yet I did that a few weeks back FMCSA's new hours of service rules come into effect this September 29th uh, on a Tuesday Originally it was the 28th, so if you watch the video, I say the 28th a few times in there. Of course, then they changed it after I did that video. It's to the 29th. But somebody made a great comment about the 30-minute break rule, wanting a little more clarification on that. Okay, Scott sent in a comment asking, okay, is the 30-minute uh, break required after your first driving period or after a total of eight hours of driving? And the uh, quick answer is, it's a total of eight hours of driving, which means you could drive two hours, stop for 15 minutes, drive three hours, stop for 15 minutes, drive two more hours, stop for 15 minutes. Well, now you've only done, what, three, four, five, seven hours. You can still drive another hour before you need to take a full 30 minute break. That's the neat new part about the rule, is it used to start at the beginning of your day. As soon as you started that 14 hour clock, eight hour, within eight hours, you had to take a 30 minute break. And what, what really sucked about the current rule is uh, we'll say you took it before six hours into your 14 and you knew you were gonna run your whole 14 that day. Well, now you had to take two of them. That really blew. Now, you'll probably end up just having to take one ever anymore is the wonderful part. And yeah, it's only after a cumulative time of eight hours of actual driving. So say you go on duty um, at, at eight o'clock in the morning uh, for 15 minutes, you find a problem and you're off for the next two hours trying to deal with that. Well, on the old rule, still uh, another, uh, what, five hours and 45 minutes later, you gotta take a break. You haven't done any driving yet, so now that even hasn't even started on the new rule. So you've spent, spent two hours uh, like off duty or on duty dealing with a problem, 15 minute pre-trip, and now you start driving. Now that's where your uh, driving time starts accumulating. It's actual driving time. All right, so like I say, you can drive for two hours, take a 15 minute break, drive another two hours, take another 15 minute break. It's still only once you've accumulated eight hours of actual driving, you have to take that half hour break. Now, the beautiful part about the new part of the uh, HOS rule on the 30 minute break that I love is uh, a 30 minute break period can be all on duty or all off duty or a combination of both. That's the neat part. Because I've always said, well, if I stop and fuel up for 15 minutes and then take another 15 minutes going to the bathroom, getting my fuel receipt, buying some stuff in the store and all that, that should count as a 30-minute break. And the new rule coming in September 29th of this year, 2020, that will count as your 30-minute break. Um, and like I said in my example earlier, if you find a problem uh, after your 15-minute pre-trip uh, and then you're off duty for the next two hours or even on duty for the next two hours while you deal with that problem, 
bang, you've already taken a 30 minute break. So then even before you started driving that day, you've already taken one. Not a bad deal. It's gonna be much easier to get our 30 minute break in there. And we'll probably only have to take one each day where sometimes we ended up taking two, which uh, was just ridiculous. Two of complete off duty where you couldn't be doing anything else related to on duty, which was annoying. Sometimes uh, being an owner operator, I'll stop and go pick up parts at like a freight liner somewhere. I've stopped at that one in Indianapolis a lot of times. I go in there for 15 minutes, get the parts, go back out, and I'll stick them on because it'll be like an air filter or something really quick to do. Well, I've killed a half hour break, but yet uh, I need to show all that is on duty time because I'm doing something for the truck, I'm buying parts, and I'm installing them. But that can be my 30 minute break now, where before then I would have had to stop again for another 30 minutes on the current rule. So it's gonna make doing the 30 minute break much easier. So all you gotta remember is it's eight hours of cumulative driving time. It doesn't start when your 14 hour clock starts. Just forget all about it, get that out of your head. You don't even have to think about that anymore. It's only driving time. So say you drive for five hours and you took a 15 minute break and then you drove for another three. Well, yeah, now you gotta take a 30 minute break. Okay, so that's where that would come into play. It's cumulative driving time has nothing to do with when your day starts anymore. And that's the beautiful part. Please go check out my video all about the uh, new coming up uh, hours of service rules. I did this a few weeks ago. It's down uh, a little further down in the uh, in the videos there. I'll put the, the uh, link down in the description so you can just pop right onto it. And because uh, you want to know all the rules before they come into place, September 29th, Tuesday is when they're coming into place and now being uh, the 13th of August right now, that's not that far off. We're talking about six weeks away, baby. And the new rules finally come into place and I described them completely. I read the whole document. Uh, I even listened to the whole webinar about their question and answer session. Did that a couple about a week ago to clarify, to make sure I knew I was telling you everything the right way and I was. So, uh, and they ended up giving us a 30, uh, up to a three hour break between a two hour and three hour break every day if we want it, even though they don't know they gave it to us. Watch that video and I'll explain how that happens. And also quickly want to say to understand how bad those storms were in the Midwest on Monday, like I say, uh, turquoise trucking, their, their offices got annihilated. Uh, I heard about tons of trucks flipped over in the Cedar Rapids area. I know when I was driving through Iowa today, saw a lot of the corn fields where all the corns just mashed down from the winds, uh, which really sucks for the farmers. Um, I know I, I tried to stop at a couple of, uh, I tried to stop at the Quick Star in Brooklyn. They still didn't have power because uh, I wanted to get a pizza there. And in the lot, there um, was a little box truck. A little box truck flipped over. Obviously, it had been sitting there since Monday. It got blown over from the wind, and I have some video of that. Okay, you can't really see it, but up here to the right, uh, they're working on the roof there at the Quick Trip, where a whole bunch of the tiles have been ripped off on this little uh, overhang piece. And as I'm swinging around, you'll be able to see they've got all the fuel islands uh, taped off there because they have no power and have no fuel of them. This is the quick trip in Brooklyn, Iowa. I-80 exit uh, 202. And look at this. You wonder how bad those storms were coming through here. Look at this truck flipped over. This quick trip is completely shut down. They've got no power still. I'm trying to stop here for a break, but nobody, well, they're working on stuff inside, but. Anyway, look at that truck, flipped over right there. It was a nasty storm. It was hurricane and tornado strength winds that uh, rocked the Midwest. And so much of it in Iowa, like I say, Cedar Rapids especially. Uh, turquoise trucking, the guys I, I lease to, uh, they're all okay. They're having to work out of a hotel, <laughs> but they're still doing okay. Uh, and they're keeping things running. Those are good guys, I tell you. Great, great company to work for. 
Uh, and now, speaking of good companies, uh, another little quick note, I, I need to talk about Blue Tiger for a minute. Okay, because of talking about good companies, I want to talk about the Blue Tiger. They, they did something to redeem themselves uh, to me, and I think uh, that makes them a good company. Now, uh, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, I got this headset, the Blue Tiger Elite Plus. For one, it's incredibly light. I had this. I did some of my first reviews on this channel ever about this headset. I started. I actually did it in three parts because I, I kept. I, did, I didn't know how to do it all that well, and I kept getting them cut off. I didn't have an editor then. Blah blah blah. Long story short, anyway. So I did uh, like a whole bunch of videos on this. Um, compared to the blue uh, parrots, like the blue parrot 450 is pretty heavy. This one doesn't weigh a damn thing. It's really super light. And I got the uh, Elite Plus. There's the Elite, which just it kind of looks like this. Then there's the uh, Elite Dual, which has the two headphones, but one of them's not removable. Then there's the Elite Plus, which is this one, and it has the second oh, removable headset. So all you have to do is take it. It's got kind of little slots in there, and you take this one, you slide it on. Like whoop! I got it sideways. Hang on a second here. There you go. And now it becomes a, a stereo headset. It's a beautiful thing, all right? So that way, if you just want to tune everybody else out, you can uh, and use the, the double. Of course, you don't want to use the double while driving down the road. You need to have one ear open legally. But then you just take this and you shunk, pop this back off, and now it's your standard Bluetooth headset. And like I say, it's one of the lightest, it's one of the most comfortable, and has one of the longest battery lives uh, I've found. Uh, so I liked it. So anyway, when my wife needed a new headset, she, by the way, had the Blue Parrot 350 that she'd been using for a few years, and it had been working pretty well for her. I didn't like the 350, she liked it. But then uh, that one died on her, and so she needed a new headset. So back in May, I ordered her one of these, because I said, well, it's a great headset, I really like it, the battery life's really good. And I got it for her. And then about a month ago, uh, when we went to Grand Lake and everything, it, had, it started having issues. She'd leave it charged in for hours, but it wouldn't charge. And then it wouldn't turn on or anything. Um, so she kept trying to deal with it. And then about last week sometime, she said, look, it's just not working. And like I say, I'd had good luck with mine. And so uh, I said, all right, well, let me see when we bought it. And uh, luckily I bought it off of Amazon. Here's one advantage to buying things on Amazon. You get a digital receipt. So uh, I went to the Blue Tiger website, and I hadn't registered her, her headset. I've honestly never registered mine, but it's over a year now, so I'm out of warranty on it. But uh, so we should have still been within the warranty. You get a year warranty on new ones, and uh, you get even less hassle within 90 days. Well, uh, this was uh, earlier in the week. It's the 13th of August right now. I did this uh, a few days ago. On Sunday, um, I went on their website and registered her headset was able to upload the um, receipt from Amazon, and so then I called them on Monday, because of course they weren't there on Sunday. Well, that was kind of a hassle, but anyway, when I called them on Monday, I said, look, you know, I love this headset. I've been using it for over a year. I even did a great review for you guys, and uh, you know, they did send me a mug and a hat. <laughs> yeah, big deal. But anyway, I said, so, you know, I've been happy with mine, but hers is dying. Hers just isn't working. And uh, here's what surprised me. She said, well, have you registered it yet? I said, well, yeah, honestly, we just did that yesterday. Uh, and she said, well, that's okay. It's still within the 90 days um, where you, we have, we you, get, you get returns with no problem, no issues, no questions, nothing. So she said, because we're still within the 90 days, you don't even have to send it back to us first. We're gonna send you out a new one today. I was like, what, what, ah! holy crap is oi. She said, yeah, then we'll send you a return label and, uh, and everything just to send the other one back to us prepaid. And, uh, but we're gonna send you out a brand new one right now. No questions asked. I was like, holy crap. So I gotta say, Blue Tiger, your customer support, uh, huge thumbs up for that. Because like I said, because we were, even though I just registered it the day before, I had proof from Amazon when I bought it was back in uh, May of like May 16th. And this was, what, a few days ago. So it would have been like the 10th or something like that. So we were th just within that 90 days, barely. But because we were, she sent us out a brand new one without qu any questions. And all we have to do is send the other one back. 
So I'd say because of that awesome response from Blue Tiger customer support, that is even a better reason, I think, to buy a Bluetooth headset from Blue Tiger. And like I say, I really like this one a lot. It's light, I can wear it for hours, and it doesn't bother me. And then if I want to have a stereo headset, bing, this one pops on, and you get the stereo headset. You get the both of both, both worlds. So, props to Blue Tiger. So that's about it for this video. Like I say, uh, for the whole rundown, a whole long explanation of the whole hours of service, the new one's going into effect on September 29th. Please watch that video. I'll put the link in the description. It'll give you all the information you need. And like I say, I just clarified your 30 minute break rule earlier in this video. More videos to come. I got a whole bunch still in the pipeline that I, I have ready to do. I just haven't gotten to them yet. You know, I am a working truck driver, so I can't just sit around doing videos. But uh, I do them as often as I can, usually two to three times a week. You can look for new videos right here on the Clutch Trucker channel. Please subscribe. Please uh, like. Please comment. I do get to your comments. Takes a day or two, two sometimes because I'm working. Uh, ring that bell for notification. As always, sniff that magic YouTube fairy dust. Clutch out.